Hi, my name is Jackie Rogers. I am the Director of Communications and Advocacy at Ingenuity. Totally honored to be here today. Um, we'll be talking about the Once Upon Our Time capsule, which is a fun project. Make sure you got your ready to play shoes on today because you are going to be a part of this. So um, we get ready to start here. Just a reminder, um, these were the values that informed this conference and we'd like you to uphold, you know, have these uphold the conference today. So take a moment to choose the value or values you'd like to focus on in the session and throughout the day. And it may have changed between when you first did this this morning um, during the opening keynote into where you are now. Oh, I skipped myself. <laughs> Lizzie's kind of shy. She didn't want anybody to know who she is, but I'm going to tell you. Lizzie's an educator with eight years of classroom experience at CPS as a diverse learning and theater teacher. She currently works as an arts integration consultant across Chicago. She is the lead teaching artist and project manager with the Chicago Children's Theater on the, on the Once Upon Our Time capsule project. As the founder of Backyard Chicago Ensemble, she's created trauma responsive theater curricula for middle schoolers devised intergenerational theater work that has been performed in Chicago and New York City. Hi, everybody. And we also have Micah Figueroa. Micah is an actor, director, fight and movement director, choreographer, and a teaching artist. He holds a BFA in theater studies, directing and playwriting from Southern Methodist University. He attended the British American Drama Academy in London. He brings years of experience teaching physical theater to children and adults of all ages. Mike is a teaching artist with the Chicago Children's Theater, DePaul University, Raven Theater, the Actors Gymnasium, Circumstein, and Looking Glass Theater, where he's also a frequent performer. And last, but certainly not least, we have Terry Guest. Terry is a Chicago-based playwright, actor, and teaching artist. As an actor, he has worked with theater companies across the country, including Steppenwolf, the Goodman Theater, and the Story Theater here in Chicago, Alliance Theater, Actors Express, Aurora Theater down in Atlanta, and Arts Garage in West Palm Beach. His play, At the Wake of a Dead Drag Queen, is the recipient of the 2018 Outfront Theater Spectrum Series Grant and had its world premiere at the Story Theater here in Chicago. Other plays include Ghost Town at the Chicago Children's Theater, the Magnolia Ballet, Marie Antoinette and the Magical Negroes, workshopped with the Story Theater, and he's represented by DDO here in Chicago. Welcome everybody, and I am going to pass this to Lizzie to get the fun started. All right, guys, so this is Once Upon Our Time Capsule. We're gonna tell you about this citywide project that's launching, and we are going to walk you through the process of making your own time capsule. The agenda for today, what is a time capsule? I am going to set the scene for you. Then Terry is going to lead us through a, a beautiful fairy tale. And then Mike is gonna lead us through some embodied games and exploration. Following that, you are each going to make your own time capsule story. And then we are going to close with sealing our time capsule and taking questions. Objectives, these are the same objectives that you would use for students in your setting. Participants will reflect on their past year during COVID, embodying and visually processing highs, lows, and significantly their own bravery. Participants will create a narrative of bravery out of their experiences during the past year, and participants will create a time capsule to honor and release their experiences. We are so honored that you are here with us today. This is gonna be a really special journey. Um, what is a time capsule? A time capsule is a container of important or special stuff from the present that gets sealed or buried for discovery in the future, like a message in a bottle or buried treasure. Sometimes time capsules get sent into space. Why now? We are at, we have had a year that is historically significant, unlike any other. And we are collectively looking towards a future that feels really tender and probably a little bit scary. Um, I 
positioned that at this moment of transition, we are uniquely able to not only reflect on what we've been through, but imagine what we want the world to look like. Um, in our time capsule, we're gonna create a physical container or a digital container for our experiences, our hard won strength, our exhaustion and our hopes. Just naming that this week in particular, very heavy for educators, a lot. And then we're zooming out even more than that on this past year and really um, inviting you into a moment of processing with us while really acknowledging your incredible heroism. Five years from now, we wanna excavate those insights from this liminal space and see where we have come as a society. How exciting. This is the project. We are launching a citywide arts project for kids to honor and release events of the past year. We are inviting kids across Chicago and you and your setting to create time capsule containers. So kids will create digital time capsules, physical time capsules, visual, I mean, all types of different time capsules that are just reflections on their past year during COVID. And then we're gonna have collection points throughout the city where those time capsules are gonna be compiled in larger time capsules that will then be designed by Chicago artists for public installations. They, these larger time capsules will be housed in Chicago institutions over the next five years with a beautiful community unveiling in 2026. This is our website. Um, we will talk more about what resources as an educator you can find on our website. This is our email. Please feel free to reach out to us if you want to use this curriculum, if you want collaboration around this, if you have lingering questions after the session. And that's our Instagram. Um, in this session, you'll each make your own time capsule. And this will be very comparable to a one hour session you could do in your own classroom. We also are developing a five-day lesson plan if you wanted to do a deeper exploration with time capsules with kids. Um, we have an exercise bank on our website where you can pull all different types of exploratory activities designed to stimulate reflection on the past year. And then we also have an incredible resource from Lori's Center for Childhood Resilience that is about um, holding space for hard conversations because we acknowledge that there has certainly been trauma in the past year. And as we open up spaces for reflection, we also open up spaces for kids to talk about loss, grief, um, or any number of other things. And we want you as an educator to feel supported in that. So this guide from Lori is absolutely um, essential. I'm gonna pass it over to Terry to set the stage with a beautiful story. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming out here today. So ordinarily, I would ask this question and get some actual responses from you, but I'm gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be let off the hook today. But what, is a fairy tale. I'll tell you. A fairy tale is a story whose purpose is to teach future generations something that is really, really important, something that they need to know. And fairy tales come in all different shapes and sizes, Cinderella, Rapunzel, Little Red Riding Hood, but they're all teaching lessons for kids to learn in the future. That's why we still tell them today, right? Now, most fairy tales start with a five word phrase. Can anyone write in the chat what this five word phrase is that begins most fairy tales? Any ideas? Yes, thank you. Yes, exactly, once upon a time. So the time that we're gonna be talking about is right now in this past year in COVID. And like in any really good fairy tale, we're gonna have a character who starts one way, goes through a bunch of trials and tribulations and comes out on the other side with having learned new things and um, having some new perspective. And I think for me personally, I can definitely relate to that. I mean, I, I am a completely different person than the Terry I was at the beginning of last year in ways that I don't even think I have actually recognized or acknowledged. And hopefully through this exercise, we can um, explore some of those um, changes that we have all had. Now, of course, we know we've all had certain things that we can all share, right? We all had to wear masks. We all had to be six feet away from our friends and other people. We didn't get to see friends. We didn't get to see family. We had to do work from home. We had to do school from home. But I'm really curious about what particular parts of your fairy tale that you have only you and don't share with anyone else. 
what parts of the story and your communities happened to you? What are your private, what is your private journey? With that in mind, I'm going to read you a fairy tale about a very brave person living through a time with a lot of changes. This story was inspired by the pandemic, but I invite you to picture yourself and your own situations and your own community as I go through this story. So if you would like, you can relax, close your eyes, and listen to a fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a very brave person. Their life had a lot of things in it. Friends, school, playing outside, playing inside. Then one day, a really strong wind started from outside and the winds changed everything. All of a sudden, it wasn't safe to do a lot of the things this brave person was used to doing. The wind made the person stay inside and see less of their friends. There was a lot on the news. One thing is for sure. While the wind was there, the brave person had a lot of time to think about who they were. A lot of time to think about the world, the parts that they missed and the parts that they didn't. Sometimes the, bra the brave person thought maybe they would not be able to make it another day. Raise your hand if at some point during this year you've thought, this is it, I can't make it another day. I can't do it. Sometimes this brave person felt fear. Raise your other hand. Oh, I got this, I got the vaccine. So I'm gonna raise the same hand, but <laughs> raise your other hand if you've ever felt fear this year. Yes, they knew people who were getting blown away by the wind. You know, maybe they even lost someone they loved. But always, even when things looked really dark around them, somehow they made it. Sometimes they felt joy. There were new traditions, yummy foods, new games, time with family. And all the while, this brave person was becoming braver and braver every single day. Now that is awesome to think about. Through the fear and the joy, this person found a new way to look at the world. This person became someone different, a hero. This brave person was so proud of who they became that they looked at themselves in the mirror and they said, ooh, I'm proud. So do me a favor, look at yourself in your imaginary mirror and go, ooh, I'm proud. Yeah. <laughs> One miraculous day, however, it seemed like things were going to change again. The winds outside were getting less and less intense. And the hero started thinking about what they wanted the world to look like once the winds were safe again. So they decided to make a time capsule so they would never forget their strength and courage and their vision for the future that came from living in a time with these crazy winds. They kept those special memories sealed up for five years while the world changed. And at the end of five years, five years is a long time, right? A lot can change in five years. At the end of these five years, other kids opened the time capsules and learned all about that brave person and how the world used to be. The whole city, no, the whole country, no, forget about that. Y'all, the whole world was amazed at how much had changed. And they knew, looking around, looking at the time capsules, that they were living in a world full of heroes. The end. You can open your eyes. Thank you for going through that fairy tale with me. I'm gonna pass it over to my friend Micah to take some of the themes in that fairy tale and physicalize it in our bodies. Micah? <laughs> Thank you, Terry. <laughs> Terry's also giving us a perfect example of already physicalizing things in your body. Oh, there we go. Love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, and Terry, thank you for that story. Um, that It's a great way to center us. So um, everyone, uh, real quick, we ask, so we're, we're going to move into an exercise portion. So I just want to be very clear up front, the various ways in which you can participate in what we're about to do. So um, this is going to be a very visual and embodied experience. If you are comfortable, please turn on your, your camera. Um, uh, and uh, because we're going to be using our bodies to craft moments of our own experience uh, with our with COVID, with with our own 
strong winds. Um, you can also please use the chat to respond as well. Uh, but what? I, but no matter what, I hope if you are uh, your camera off or whatever it may be, please fully participate to whatever degree that you are most comfortable. So before we get, jump into it, I want us to center us in the present right now. So wherever you are, go ahead and place your feet flat on the ground. And uh, in mindfulness, we talk about sitting with dignity. And that just means taking up your space. It means be exactly the size you are. Don't be smaller. Don't be trying to be bigger. Just be you. You're enough. We're going to breathe in three times in through our nose, out through our mouth. Ready? Go ahead and breathe in. And let it go. Feel that breath coming in and out of your belly. Breathe in. And let it go. Last time, slowly breathe in. And if you'd like to place a hand over your heart, go ahead and let it go. With your hand in your heart, if you'd also like to participate and say, tell yourself, I am proud of me. I am proud of me. Because you should be. You definitely should be. And I want to acknowledge here in this moment, too, that in your own personal story, you, when we heard the story about uh, our Here with the Winds, too, you may have heard your own story inside this. And I want to acknowledge and honor that you have been this person. You have been brave this entire time. You have come out on their side and you have become a hero uh, in many more real, real ways than are even our figurative that we're using right now. You have done this. And thank you for continuing this process right now with us. So go ahead and drop that and check it out. So as we reflect on uh, our own bravery and our hopes for the next uh, chapter of our city and our world, uh, we're going to play some games. Cool? So uh, in the story, we had a beginning before the winds and a middle with some highs and lows and at the end with a hero that was imagining a better future. Uh, and now we're gonna take some snapshots with our bodies to explore our own journey in this year. So I want you now to put yourself into the position of our hero and the, we're going to play a snapshot. So I'm going to count down from six, six, five, four, three, two, one. When I'm one, acting, acting like I took a snapshot of wherever, wherever you are right now, you're going to embody in a tableau a moment responding to some prompts that I give you. So and I want you to hold that pose and I want you to freeze in it. And when you are freezing that pose, I want you to continue breathing and continue thinking about the moment that you have behind your, your, your pose. Cool? So uh, we're gonna, just like our story, we're going to start at the beginning. I want you to think of a time before the pandemic. So time before COVID, what your life was like, yeah? So. Uh, it could be, just imagine anything that you would like. What did you do with your friends and your family? What was something that you used to love doing? How did that make you feel? And I also want to be super clear, these poses don't need to be a reenactment of any one moment. We can make our movements as abstract or whatever it is that you want. Focus on that experience and that feeling as that, that generally seems to be uh, really successful. All right, everybody, here we go. First one, think of that moment before the pandemic. Six, five, four, Three, two, one, pose. Reason to, and, and live in this moment for just a second. Live in that moment for just a second. Very nice. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna peek around, I'm coming out of my pose to see what other things I can see. We have a lot of um, some, some uh, expressions of uh, vision happening, some, uh, a lot of openness and joy, a lot of joy. Very cool. We have some, <laughs> some, like some dancing even too. Uh, all of these things I can really relate to. Absolutely, very cool. And shake it out. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Very nice, very, very nice. Thank you for that moment. Very cool. And now we're going to imagine a time during COVID. But this one's gonna be special. We're gonna, be, we're gonna do this twice, in two different ways, cool? So I want you to go backwards a little bit to any point in time in your experience with COVID where you've struggled, where you've experienced a, dis a difficulty, and I want you to be sensitive in this moment for sure, but I want you to, to really go back and revisit what you were feeling or whatever that moment was of a moment of struggle that you may have had. Um, imagine a, a tough day, what happened? How did you feel? And I, I, what I want you to do is we're gonna make a statue of that difficult moment, okay? So breathe in, give yourself some love, and six, five, four, Three, two, 
One, give me a pose. Very nice, very, very nice. I see some, some uh, closed gestures. I see some real ruminating gestures. I see, see, see some avoidance, some anger even, some uh, very, very nice, a lot of sadness, some a uh, lot of uh, um, uh, uplifting. Uh, there's, there's incredible moments here actually. Thank you all for your, for, your, um, for your participation in this. And go ahead and shake it out. Very, very nice. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Very cool. Very, very cool. And as we're going through this too, I want you to imagine here too that you are actually in your body recreating your journey, your fairy tale through your experience with the COVID. Now we're gonna breathe in one more time. And as you breathe in, I want you to think about a moment of joy or a success or something that was surprising or delightful that is unique to your experience with COVID. So go ahead and breathe in one more time. Give yourself a second to let that come to you. And six, five, four, three, two, yes, do it already. One, let it go. Go ahead and find that pose, find that pose. Live in it, still revisit that moment inside. Very cool, I'm gonna come out of mine to see yours. Excellent, some, some smiles, some uh, blown away, some leaning in even, some writing, some work. Uh, some, it looks like it's listening to some music here too. Uh, <laughs> some other gigantic successes and a lot of smiles actually, which is a great thing to see. Very cool, and come out of that, check out. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Excellent, very, very cool. So I also wanna acknowledge once again too, like I said earlier, both of these moments are valid that you had during COVID, the, the, the uh, times you've been soaring and the times you've been struggling. But no matter what, you have been brave this entire time. You have been making it, you have been working, you have been taking all the steps that you have uh, deemed necessary to make sure that you and those around you are taken care of. So I just wanna honor that one more time. So, uh, we're, so now what we're going to do is switch it up a little bit. This game is called Keep Leave, Keep Leave, cool? And what this is going to do is going to help us imagine a little bit about what the future is going to be like, the future is going to be like. So everybody practice two large gestures with me really quick. When I say keep, I would love for you to hug yourself, keep. So give yourself a big old hug, like so. Very, very cool. Give yourself a big, nice hug. So when, we're, when I say keep, I want you to put yourself into this body and I want you to think about something that has happened during COVID, anything that you actually wanna hang on to when we get out of this or when we return to our new normal. This is a thing that you have uh, maybe surprised or developed for yourself that you uh, value and that you don't want to see change uh, or that you want to continue changing into. So this is keep. Very cool. And then now I want you to really put your hands straight out and give me a leave. I'm going to say leave. So when I say leave, go and extend your hands out all the way like so. And I want you to think about a moment that or anything that you are done with that you don't want to re return to. That is not a part of your new normal when, whenever we get out of this. Right? And then go and check that out. So the last bit of participation with keep and leave is your vocalization of this or your internal participation. So when I say keep, I would love for you to actually speak to your truth, to actually vocalize something that you want to keep, that something that you, you, you love and want to continue um, with, with after this. And when I say leave, similarly, something you can please vocalize, whatever that is. Also feel free to use the chat. Also, if none of that is uh, comfortable for you, feel free to just think about it, just to hold that truth inside, right? But there's an activeness inside that I, that I want you to experience. So ready, here we go. And keep, I'm gonna keep wearing masks when I'm sick. This is, I'm actually a big fan of the masks now. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it. Yes, very, very cool. Give yourself a moment to live in this. And you can, like I said, speak this out loud if you'd like to. You can turn on your microphone. I would love to hear your voice, but you don't have to. Um, very cool, very, very cool. We're in this moment. Keep. Long walks. Yes. There we go. Deck, let it, let it loose for a little bit. That's great. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And shake it out, shake it out. Very cool, very, very cool. Nice. And breathe in. Leave. Masks. <laughs> so just do your hand out this way. There you go. Yes, there you go. I'm okay with it too. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. Leave it. Leave it. I'm. I'm. Uh, no more hugging. I, I. I. need some hugs in my life. Hugging. I'm. Leaving, I'm le uh, you know, asking with consent. I. But I'm leaving this six feet of distance thing. Uh, and, you know, I'll give it to anybody who's comfortable, who who uh, wants to keep it. But, man, I need. I need to be around people again. 
Very, very cool. And check that out, check that out, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Very cool. And then we're gonna do it one more time. We're gonna, so I want you to think of a new moment for yourself. Breathe in. And keep. I love to cook before, but I'm gonna keep all these new new things that I cooked before. My partner and I have done so many roasts. Yes, speak to it, speak to it. We don't have to give each other, uh, we can all speak at the same time too. It can be cacophony of voices, it's okay. Lots of free time. Very nice. Yes, excellent, excellent, very cool. Keep it and feel that moment again and check it out. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Lovely, lovely. And last thing, leave. Leave it again, leave it. Fear. I'm leaving, uh, giving everybody else my time, uh, leaving uh, poor time management leaving and centering self-love and centering some boundaries in my time. Yes, very cool. Very, very cool. See some, and I'm gonna acknowledge what's happening in the chat over here, a lot of things saying fear, uh, issues with grounding and self-love, uh, issues with our own bodies, absolutely, sleeping, mindfulness, self-care, excellent, very, very cool. Thank you for all of this. And let that go, let that go. Excellent. And so now in, uh, what we just did in our keep leave. Now I want us to project a little bit. So we're gonna go back to our snapshot. Cool, this is our final snapshot. This is a moment that lives in the future. And this, I want you to give you two strong options. You can imagine something for yourself in the future. This is a, this, this snapshot is you doing this thing. Or you can imagine this is what you hope for others as well, right? So you, this, is, this is a two, two way street here. Um, so in this pose, we're going to breathe in deep and we're going to find a pose of something we wish for the future, for ourselves or for others. And those also are mutually exclusive. Maybe you want to share what you want with everybody else too. All right, everybody, breathe in. Let it go. And six, five, four, three, two, one, snapshot. Very cool, very cool. I'm gonna come out of mind to see yours. A lot of excitement, actually. A, a lot of actually soaring gestures. Very cool, some smiles, some pre sincere presence, actually. Very cool, and come out of that, shake yourself out of that. Excellent, very, very nice, everybody. Thank you for uh, letting us have that, uh, that, sharing that moment with all of us. Um, and I am now, going to pass, so, so, so the, the, the point of these exercises is to prime us now to start writing our fairy tale. So all these experiences you, you've had, keep a little track of them and, and we'll uh, put them to play right now as I pass to my friend, Lizzie. Okay, thank you so much everyone for participating and Micah, those were beautiful snapshots. At this point, we are going to transition into making our time capsule fairy tale. So what we are going to make is what will go inside of our time capsule. Okay. I'm going to ask you to put on your educator hats for a moment and talk about what this could look like in a classroom. And then we're going to step back into being a participant. So at this point, this can be very discipline specific. Whatever kids make for their time capsule is a time capsule. The music, the beautiful music we heard this morning deeply felt like a time capsule to me of the past year. Um, sculptures can be a time capsule. Digital submissions, videos, somebody making up a play. We love theater. These are all time capsules. Time capsules can be digital. They do not have to be physical. There are so many visual arts teachers in here that I'm sure your minds are spinning. Of course, these can be highly visual. I can imagine so many different collage-based, drawing-based, all sorts of project-based um, explorations that kids could do that could be the inside of their time capsule. For today's purpose, for today's workshop, I'm gonna walk you through what we will be making. And just keep in mind that your creativity is so welcome as you implement this in your own setting, if you choose to. So. Based on the reflections that we did with Micah, this is a template for storytelling. Um, we have a beginning before COVID, we have a middle, what was hard or scary, what was a moment of joy? And then we have an end, what is the best future you can imagine? We are gonna have about 10 minutes to draw or write 
um, our own stories because we're going to guide you into the process of making your own time capsule. So if you have paper nearby, if you want to type, you can type. If you want to draw, you can draw. But we're going to have 10 minutes of you telling your own very specific time capsule story. Um, I'm going to leave this slide up so you guys can refer to it if you want. We will be fielding questions in the chat during this time. Um, and if you need to gather any supplies, you can absolutely go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'm going to stop talking and let you guys make. Let's see, this time I'm going to actually interpret our project a little differently. I'm going to co go collect some items, actually, for my, for my process. Beautiful. Yeah. Another good prompt for this, for kids or for you, are to look at pictures of the past year. If kids are having a hard time remembering highs and lows, that's another good thing is like, um, look what you've literally been through. Um, okay, here's me. This is what I made. So at the beginning for pre-COVID, I wrote, who was I? I'm just becoming curious about that question. In the middle, I wrote low lows and then more me. You guys can tell I'm a very visual artist. And at the end, more love, more self-awareness, more self-care, more everything. But then I had a thought like, does it take loss to create change? Because this has been so painful. And I guess I don't really have an answer to that. But I also wanna to speak to, I'm remote teaching high schoolers as I imagine a lot of us are remote teaching and the changes that they have gone through, the degree of self-love, self-care and self-awareness that they have developed through the pandemic, it kind of blows me away. And so I do, I think that was hitting me as I was reflecting in this moment. Um, okay, Micah, would you like to share? Thank you, Bilal I feel you, I feel you. Um, yes, I would love to share. Um, so my pre-pandemic <clears throat> is represented by this penny. Um, I ran myself ragged for this little piece of coin right here. Um, while this is you know, inescapable and still very important, uh, my, my relationship to this, was a very toxic and has been a very toxic relationship. This is something that is pre-pandemic for me. Um, that has led to some of the negative things that I have felt uh, during COVID, which is uh, represented by this frayed piece of rope uh, that I have of me feeling like there's a little like broken attachment. There's not a real lot of security uh, in a lot of um, strong ways. So this little uh, broken up piece of rope, um, a joyful thing is that my partner and I, um, I'm, I'm a big outdoorsman. I've, I've loved being outside my entire life, but this uh, past pandemic has given me actually a lot of opportunity, more opportunities to be outside, and especially with my partner. Uh, and this is represented by this chunk of tree bark. Um, so all the different times going camping, things like that, uh, being outside, represented by some tree bark. And then uh, for post pandemic, um, this rock, which was also found on a um, adventure outside, but um, this this represents for me at least a new sense of stability and groundedness. So um, that's me. Thank you so much, Micah. Uh, Terry, would you like to share? Um, yes, I went very insidery <laughs> and, and talked about music. So. I listed some songs and albums that I listened that I was listening to. So before COVID, I have Stupid Love by Lady Gaga as a song that I was listening to all the time. And um, the I also have a Stevie Wonder album on each of these lists. So and Songs in the Key of Life is a Stevie Wonder album that I was really jamming to. I love Stevie Wonder, I always have. Um, makes me think of my mom. Then COVID Scary, I just put Joni Mitchell and Ani DeFranco. I have been listening to them pretty much consistently when things are scary. Um, and the Stevie Wonder album I put is Inner Visions. Um, and then for July, or for July, for COVID Joy, I wrote, this is not safe for work, uh, WAP was my COVID Joy song. Mm -hmm. um, and my Stevie Wonder album is Fulfillingness First Finale. And then after COVID, I have two answers. One is the song Call Me By Your Name by Lil Nas X, because I love that we have some controversy to talk about. And I can't wait to get into a, where we're just like arguing about stupid pop music again. Like that's gonna be a blast. Um, I also put a new Rihanna album. I think that would be that would be great after COVID. Um, and Hotter Than July is the Stevie Wonder album that I put for that. Cause it's, uh, it's just about like summertime and having fun and making bad decisions. I love that. Thank you, Terry. <laughs> okay. 
Um, oh, got a special shout out. And I think, okay, um, I have yet to hear anyone who wants to share of the participants, but if you do, you can absolutely put it in the chat or come off mute and tell us about your time capsule story. Um, and while you are reflecting on whether you'd like to share, I will speak to the idea that um, these, even these three time capsules looked so significantly different. Um, there's drawing in mine, in Micah's there was concrete objects. Terry specifically chose the lens of music and that you can scaffold in your classroom um, exactly what you want it to be or leave it as open as you want. And I think that's part of the beauty of this project. Okay, I'm just gonna give 30 more seconds of wait time if anyone wants to share. No pressure to share. Okay, beautiful. So I'm gonna reshare the slides. Now, at this point, your students have created their time capsule story. We are extremely eager to begin collecting responses by kids across the city. Our website is ourtimecapsule.org. There is an incredibly easy submission process. You would just take pictures of whatever your students make, um, go onto our website, press submit, and we're gonna begin compiling these from all over the city again for inclusion in this um, citywide public arts project. So we can kind of take the lead of kids as we process and reflect on this past year. Our last step for making a time capsule, I'm going to hand it over to Micah. Excellent, thank you so much again. All right, so um, I I sort of like mixed a, a little bit of uh, what we eventually, you know, the, the full possibilities of this project by actually using purely objects for these. But the, first, the next thing I want you to do is in addition to um, the written work or the oral work or whatever it else is that you contributed to this time capsule, take a second for yourself and see if there is a special object that you can actually go uh, put into this as well. And this can mean a myriad of different things to you. This can be literal, it can be very abstract, uh, but it, it can be, and also large and small, it can be whatever the size that you can you know, fit into a, 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 a capsule. So just take a couple seconds for yourself um, and, and I also know that you may not be in the best scenario to like get that real one object that you are thinking of. So just do your best in this moment to, to find something that represents the closest that you want to express. So find that for a second. Do it for me too. Ooh, let me see. You know what? Actually, I got it right here. So for me, as we, as we do it, uh, I'm going to put in, uh, this is a, one of those uh, little cell phone stand things. I have taught so many classes with this thing. So many classes <laughs> with my cell phone in this. This is this is a special object for me. Uh, and if anybody would like to quickly, oh nice, Lizzie. Well, actually, Lizzie, can you share that real quick? Yeah, I thought I was unmuted and I was not. I found this really special bead that my friend sent me in snail mail during the pandemic. So that's oh that I would put in my time capsule that when a kid opened, it would be like a magical mystery for them. Yes, and, that's, and this is the thing I actually truly love about this thing itself, the special object, is your own personal uh, 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 signature a little bit uh, into this. It doesn't need to literally make sense. It doesn't, there, no, nobody else needs to understand what it means to you. Um, because the idea is whenever you experience this too, you actually may have uh, similar uh, rem uh, remembrances and memories flood back to you whenever, you know, five years from now. All right, so now, last little bit. This is the additional uh, fun, um, uh, artistic side of things are containers for these time capsules. So we have a couple options that Lizzie can, is going to tell us about in a little bit when it comes to like larger collections, things like that. But um, now you get to choose what to contain your uh, your uh, time capsule in. It can be anything. You can literally roll up your piece of paper and you can uh, staple it. You could tape it and you can you know put it in a, a, a toilet paper tube. Whatever it is you want. Um, but take a second really quick to go find something uh, for yourself to make it real. We're going to, you know, follow through on this. This time capsule really is for you. So take a second uh, to uh, put your put your piece, your, your, your offering into a time into into something that you can contain. And for just purposes of education, things like that, 
you can all make this uh, decision collectively uh, in, in the classroom of like, we're gonna do toilet paper tubes or, or whatever this may be, or let your students solve this problem on their own, no matter what it is. You can decorate it, you can sign it, you can do everything else that you want uh, to uh, in this container, but just take, take a second. I'm gonna be right back. I know exactly what I'm gonna use. As you're potentially finding your container, I'm gonna to speak to what we've seen kids do as we've been piloting this curriculum. Um, we've seen kids be really creative using plastic bottles, shoe boxes, whatever, and they are very into decorating the outside of their time capsule container. It is so huge for them. Like they're writing to the future, do not open 2026 and like their name and age and it's very sweet. So as an educator, you're thinking about um, a three-step process. The first step with kids is really reflecting over the past year. The next step is telling their own time capsule story. And then the third step is kind of in some ways the most exciting, which is like sealing and decorating this time capsule container. And uh, we had a suggestion from one of our artists in just the last session that I absolutely loved because again, this capsule can add additional information. And he suggested a Clorox um, uh, 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 bottle or whatever. So th thinking about this too has been a significant um, uh, uh, process for me in this in, during COVID as well as the constant cleaning and the constant sanitization. So okay. this is mine. Absolutely. We're going to move ahead for time's sake. So at this point with your kids, you would be building in time to decorate that time capsule, whether you're making one giant time capsule as a class or they're each doing individual ones. Um, we would also be super curious to see what the outside of these time capsules look like. So this would be another opportunity to take pictures of the work and submit it at ourtimecapsule.org. Um, we are also collecting physical time capsules that kids make so that they can become part of these larger time capsules and in these um, citywide collection containers. Those are going to be in public libraries starting sometime in early summer. For now, if you do this with your kids, we would love to coordinate a pickup of whatever you guys have made in your classroom. So please email us at hello at ourtimecapsule.org. We would absolutely love to have those concrete objects so that they can become a true part of this project as kids across Chicago make time capsules. Um, again, any questions? Hello at ourtimecapsule.org. Specifically, I would like to say, well, actually, hold on. I'm gonna wait one slide for this. And this is our Instagram, once upon our time capsule. Oh, questions, no, okay. This is what I wanna tell you before we launch into questions. On our website, there are resources for educators. There is this lesson plan that we just walked through an hour long, how to, end, how to build in this narrative structure so that kids are creating their own time capsule stories, their own time capsule containers. There are also event plans for pop-up time capsule events that you could be hosting in whatever setting you're in where kids are making a time capsule in sort of a more like festive and communal atmosphere. Um, there are, as I mentioned, the resources for difficult conversations that may arise during this reflection journey from Lori. We are also extending lesson plans. So there's going to be a five-day lesson plan up next week if you want to do a more extended time capsule exploration in your classroom. The curriculum that currently exists is primarily aimed at K through four, and we are also building a curriculum for middle grades that is going to focus more heavily on literacy skills, metaphor, fairy tale as a medium. So there's um, opportunity for academic overlap there. The exercise bank, I don't think I mentioned, contains a bunch of different exercises that we've created, Terry, Micah, and I, to sim simulate reflection on the past year. These are embodied, these are visual, there is a variety of them. So you can pick and choose from that if you're interested in using this in your classroom. The last thing that I will say before we move into five minutes of questions and answers is that if you want to adapt this time capsule curriculum for your setting, please email us and let me know. I would be so eager to collaborate with you on making a curriculum that fits your needs. And if you adapt the curriculum on your own and make, you know, a dance lesson plan or a collage lesson plan or whatever, please share it with us. We are so eager to begin collecting resources by educators. Um, I think this idea is profound. I think giving kids the opportunity to reflect in this way is beautiful and I can't wait to see what any of you do with it. Okay, we are going to go back to this slide. 
And if there are questions, um, feel free to contribute them in the chat. Maybe I'll stop this here so I can monitor the chat more. Is this available in Spanish? Thank you so much for asking. We are working on translating our resources into Spanish. Those should be available early May on our website. Any other questions as you're thinking about how this could potentially be integrated into your setting or what is available for you? <laughs> 